of summer. That's awesome. And I, I, uh, I'm going to present today some amazing summer wines, delicious, refreshing, uh, something that's um, light but very satisfying and uh, perfect with food or just sipping. Well, I think it's great. Uh, everyone's been talking about what's your favorite summer wine? What's on your summer wine list? You know, you have your summer reads. People have their summer wines. So from Father's Day to Fourth of July to every day in the summer, I'm sure we got a great collection to go over today. So what do you got? So what I would do is I always say, whenever you start a party or start a little affair, always use a sparkling. So whether it's champagne or whether it's Prosecco, I have the Alto Neve uh, Prosecco, which is the one that I like to start with. It's uh, delicious, uh, refreshing, it cleanses the palate, getting ready to go. Um, that would be my starting choice for, but I also have other, other similar wines now. I have something that's uh, from Italy, which I'm in love with. It's called the Fiano grape. And uh, this is basically unoaked, so there's no oak in it, but it has a wonderful, um, uh, wonderful fruit flavor, a little drop maybe of tropical grapefruit, in my opinion. Uh, just, just unique, something that's not commercial. Did you say unoaked? Yes, these, the ones that I'm going to show you mostly are on oak, except for the last wine. Okay. And oak, you know, oak is good too, depending on your preference of how you, you know, what style of wine you like. Um, I personally like very light oak or very balanced oak and, and, and just a hint of it to add some uh, um, fullness to the wine, and depending on what food you're eating. But the, the, these wines, the, the wines that I'm showing you now, basically are something that you can even just sit around and drink and you don't have to have food with them, in my opinion. No, because people want to know, like I had, and it's funny you said on note, I had a great bottle years back and people say and ask, what's the difference between an oak and an oak? Well, basically what they do is when they, when they make the wine, there's different processes of making the wine. A lot of times they'll put white wines in stainless steel tanks and they'll temperature control them so that the flavors come out of the wine. And that's, you know, as far as that goes. Um, a lot of times also what they'll do with wine, depending on if, you're, if they're making wine that you're drinking in the next year or two, or if you're going to age wine, then you can put it in oak also. Um, depending on what oak they put it in and who the winemaker is, there's so many different processes to do it. But there's so many different ways now how they make wine. They make wine everywhere from stainless steel to concrete eggs. Wow. Eggs made of concrete. Uh, the ancient Roman went, went way many years ago. They used to put wine in concrete uh, to store it. And they, uh, a lot of the winemakers today now, they are almost duplicating that with the modern flair and they're making these uh, uh, concrete eggs. Uh, so there's so many different styles and, and, and it's a fun thing. You can experiment as soon as you like. Well, exactly. And uh, we had to ask. So, uh, and now, 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 we're, now we know. What else, uh, what else you got? So the, uh, the Fiano was from, uh, this was from Campania, Italy. Uh, Fiano is, uh, uh, you know, this is a, um, you know, the part of Italy where near Pompeii, Southern Italy. But I'm going to break out also because we just got the new vintage in, which we did. This is the Sasaya Gavi. Now this is from Northern Italy, Piemonte wine, which we've uh, discussed in the past. But this is the brand new vintage that just came out with 219 and it is unbelievable. It is so delicious refreshing um and this is also the one that we were we said had zero carbs and uh zero sugar residual in the you wine not all my keto loving and super fit uh friends out there zero carbs you heard about the sugar this is the wine to get right it's something that it's something that's a pure wine um it's done uh which we we've, we've discussed with the owner enrico who's very meticulous about how he makes his wine and uh, his winery. So the other one that I would bring out also is now we're just going to go up a little bit more uh, in body. I, I love rosé and this is one of my favorites. This is San Salvatore. Yeah. This is a grape, 100% Alianico grape. So this is from right from the uh, uh, again from the Naples area of Asuvius Campania region of Italy. And I, that's and Alianico is uh, the grape of the ancient Greeks basically that planted it there and the Romans cultivated it and it's uh one of my favorite grapes i just think it's unique it's unique uh stuff this has a lot of volcanic qualities to it from the soil 
It sounds like an amazing texture and the, and the symphony and the blend it sounds really wonderful. It's delicious. And this and this particular rosé, I just I'm in love with it. I'm drinking it all summer. So now what I would do last is I put in here. This is uh, Masso Grana Chardonnay. Okay, this is a Chardonnay from Northern Italy, Trentino, Italy, and they're very famous in Northern Italy for their white wines. Um, there's a lot of Austrian influence, German back in the day, French. They all kind of is a melting pot up in Northern Italy. So there's a lot of different winemaking styles. Uh, this Chardonnay, some, some of the whites from Northern Italy to me are the best in the world. They do a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of winemaking techniques sort of like uh, in, in Burgundy. Um, this Maso Grena is, I love it because it's, it's a, again, it's pure farming, uh, no pesticides on the grape, no you know, uh, artificial pesticides on the grapes. It has oak to it, but it's a very balanced French oak, light oak, to give it a little bit of more structure. And the, this actually, these are wines that you, could, you can drink five, six, seven years for a white wine, and they, so they, they're spectacular in five years from, you know, uh, from the vintage. So it's not something that's a commercial wine that in two years you have vinegar, you know? Yeah. These are, this is just something that I've had five, six-year-old, seven-year-old vintages that are still excellent. And um, this is something that if you wanted to have a little more body to it, let's say, and you, you know, you were eating something, you know, this could hold up, this will hold up to a hamburger, ribs, you know, anything basically. Now you're talking language for Father's Day, but you want something a little bit, that sounds exquisite and perfect. That right. Today, today basically we're going to, we're just showing some of the red, uh, some of the whites to, for refreshing and first day of summer. And then next time we speak, we'll bring all the reds that I will do a barbecue uh, uh, wines that I'm very excited about because I love barbecue. I barbecue all the time. And uh, of course, we open up about 10 different bottles to experiment. And, you know, we try to, we, I tell you, you pick your favorite, but I can, I'll give my opinion on my favorite, but it's always nice to have your friends over and, and they can pick their favorites. Well, I'm ready to get fired up and I'm coming to your barbecue next time. So you're, you're invited. I'm looking forward to that, and thank you for today. I mean, I'm, I'm happy because we're able to give people a nice summer list, summer wines to go out and enjoy, and I think everyone's been ready for that. So happy first day of summer. You too. Enjoy. I'll see you soon. Take care, Faye. Fire up that grill.